never thought of making an armadillo in polymer clay? Or how about boxes with secret compartments? Watch this interview with Deb Hart and you'll learn all about them. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Walton and welcome to Artist Stories. Today I'm talking to polymer clay artist Deb Hart in Texas and she does the most gorgeous work and I love some of her pieces and you'll be quite astounded at the variety of work that she does. So welcome Deb. Thank you, glad to be here. And here you are looking very thoughtful. The first piece of yours that really got my attention was this one, the bangles bracelets. I love that technique. It's reminded me of Van Gogh immediately. It's one of those ones that kind of started the ball rolling for me. These bracelets are actually from about 2014, 2015. I was experimenting as part of a monthly challenge for a group that I belong to. And I had a bunch of colors from canes that I had made and I chopped them up in little pieces and put together this cane. It's based on a technique that, that Donna Cato developed, but instead of using a single color, I used multiple colors in a rainbow sequence and, and it blew up all over the place and now everybody wants to know how to do it. I, I include it in several of my tutorials on my website. It's really lovely. So the clay is actually put over a base or is the base also clay? The base is also clay. I create the base out of clay and it's a great way to use up all those itty bitty scraps and pieces so you can be frugal and save money at the same time. And then I layer the veneer over top of the, the bait. And it's very solid and almost indestructible. Yes, so. I found that about polymer clay. It is quite indestructible, isn't it? It's still amazingly strong. The next one is completely different. I thought they were ceramic tiles, but uh, they're not. They're polymer clay. This is a technique that I've been working on and perfecting. You'll see it in some of my sculptures and some of my later work. This is one of the first pieces that I did where I use individual canes to create a pattern and then developed a faux stone technique that I used to backfill to give it that quality. For those people that aren't overly familiar with polymer clay. I have a lot of people watch these videos. Can you just explain what a cane is? I, uh, a cane is basically an image in a log of clay. A lot of people are familiar with Fiori when it comes to like Milano glass, like paperweights and stuff like that, where they have the different designs. It's the same sort of process but don't have to worry about burning my fingers when I work with the polymer. <laughs> right. It also, it's very similar to candy making. Or the cookie making at Christmas. Yeah. yeah, I just love them. So uh, they're quite addictive to watch the uh, candy making videos as well. Something like this to be suitable, if you made a set of tiles like this, would they be suitable to actually use in a, a kitchen or something? Oh, absolutely. The polymer is very durable. Unlike like ceramic um, coasters and things like that, it, it's not going to break. This is probably a little bit more time consuming than like the stamp ceramic tile. But um, as far as longevity goes, you, you can you can have them forever. <laughs> They're not going to break. And these are some beads using that uh, similar technique. Yeah, the, the beads are fun. I don't make a whole lot of beads. So when I do make beads, they have a tendency to disappear. And they're quite light. Yeah, polymer is very light. In fact, a lot of my faux stone techniques, when um, I do sh live shows and people see my work, like one of my sculptures, they'll pick it up thinking that it's stone. And then when it doesn't weigh anything, they're like, what is this? <laughs> Definitely. I've noticed a lot of earrings and things that you think are going to be really heavy and, and they're not. They just weigh a few grams, which is great. It was a technique that I was fooling around with making faux jade and simple little dragon. And the background is just extruded spiral lines of clay that are just spiraled up and layered next to each other. 
And then I backfilled with a, a bronze metallic liquid. It was time consuming, but it's a lot easier than what it looks. <laughs> yeah, it looks really complicated, but it's very clever. I, polymer can just create the most amazing effects of stone and, and gems and things. And this one, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, that's Chinese piece. What's that doing here? And then I realized <laughs> I love the little highlights of the gold. I think that's really, really makes it pop, doesn't it? Yeah, it really brings out the detail. It's a custom made hollow bead, so it's not solid all the way through. Uh -huh. It was a little bit of a logistical challenge, you know, trying to figure out how to string it. So I think that was the hardest part of the whole piece. Right. You do a lot of I do. I grew up in Minnesota in the northern parts of the state. But I moved down to the south and spent some time living in New Mexico and um, just fell in love with the whole southwestern um, theme. It actually brought me back a lot to my childhood because I had a great grandfather who had a gift shop in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and would bring me um, gifts as a child from his, his gift shop. And so when I started creating stuff with polymer clay, I really did um, pivot towards the Southwestern style because it really speaks to me. Yes, so we've got some more pieces coming up soon. And these totem boxes, I just thought were fascinating. What, what was the inspiration behind them? I wanted to have something that was, I don't know, I, there's something about me in containers. And I especially like containers that don't look like their containers so that you can hide stuff in them and you know have your little secrets and everything like that. And that was the sort of idea behind it. And again, these have like a, a Southwestern theme with different Kachina faces and Kachinas are different figures that Native Americans use to, to tell their stories and to teach their systems. There's a lot of leaves on them. And I know that you do some tutorials with leaves and have a look at them later, but I love that um, repetitive pattern of the leaves. Yeah, the leaves and the feathers. And you'll see a lot of um, leaves and feathers. And those are all individual little canes. When I teach my classes, I teach all of the little individual canes that we use in the class too. So it's, it's been like a fun, fun thing, especially now that Zoom has become so popular to be able to reach out and teach people. I know you have some free, free videos on your website. I have actually um, had a look at them and, and they have the feathers and the cane, the leaves and more complex flower petals and things. And they were great because when mm -hmm. you break them down, they're not that hard, but they look so effective when you, you do them en masse like that. And these are just gorgeous. So again, armadillos are not the sort of thing that you see a lot of. I don't think, do they have armadillos in Australia? Only in the zoos, I think. I don't think we have them live. It's a southwestern animal. I never saw an armadillo until I moved south, and I, I just love them. When I made the armadillo, he was one of my larger pieces, and it took me about two weeks to finish, all in all. I've done some smaller pieces that go faster now and I've gotten a little the technique down a little bit more. I build an armature out of wire and foil and then cover it with like more scrap clay because when you're working and doing clay you always have plenty of scrap and then I cover it with the layers of canes and then finish it by sanding and polishing and everything like that. About once a year maybe twice a year I offer a workshop in, in learning how to create the armature and then all the canes and um, cover a, a simple piece with that the simple simple form and classes are they on zoom yes they're on zoom I, I offer them live too for people that are for different groups here in the s or elsewhere once i get to traveling again <laughs> but, okay. One yes, <laughs> one day. But for right now, yeah, I offer them over Zoom. And the armature is one of the most popular classes that I teach. I'm sure. And here again, the Southwestern influence is very strong in your jewelry. Yeah. I love the combination of the silver and the beads and the, the polymer clay. I think that's really beautiful. 
Yes. In fact, I've been thinking about going back and doing more of these because I've been um, having a lot of people request that sort of style in a tutorial. And that's one thing that I haven't done in a tutorial yet is to do it with the liquid silver fringe on it like that. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a fun time consuming thing to do. Yeah. The, the polymer is actually the easy part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have up to the end section here. This is from your website. And two that really grabbed my attention was the middle section of the top row. And I noticed you have a class in this, but I wasn't quite sure what it is like a pendant or is it a container? It's both. It, it's called an inro, which is based on an Asian like man purse okay. um, with, by Asian warriors. And this particular one has three different sections so that it actually pulls apart into three different sections. And then you pull it closed with the cord but it can be used as a wall hanging. And again, you have little secrets and everything like that that you can hang on your wall, or you can use it as a pendant and put coins or pillbox, what, whatever you want to stash in it and everything like that. It, it's funny, I've worn it a few times when I've been traveling and, and the people, when you're going through the airport yeah. and they're checking out, they, they always look at me and said, does that open? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the one underneath it, again, has the four layers, which is very clever. And it's done on the same base. So that's how the top one opens up, too. That one's just with a, a different veneer on the outside, okay. but it's done on the same base. Just yeah. Great. It's the same concept. And the fox with all the little leaves so cute. I just did a class in that at the request of a bunch of my students. It's one of probably more, my more challenging tutorials that I offer because you actually build the box and then build the fox and layer it and then create the little leaves and everything like that so that when you close it all up again it's like a little hidden container. And these are they're getting very popular the pens and I hadn't seen yeah. them before recently and these are lovely ones. I don't do a whole lot of pens but I have several classes on making pens and the technique that I use to teach the pens is a very basic technique I know there's people out there that do absolutely gorgeous polymer pens these are basically simple pens that I use as a teaching technique in order to encourage people to think about different things that they can use polymer clay for to kind of, so many people do jewelry, but I want to teach them how to use boxes. I want to teach them how to use sculptures. I want them to try to think outside the box and the pens are a great way to do that. How long have you been working in polymer clay? Since about the mid 90s. So it's been a while. <laughs> it shows your, your techniques definitely show that sort of knowledge base. And I just love these earrings. They're just a tiny little drop earrings. And I have a number of tutorials on owl things. And um, uh, owls and I have a love hate relationship. I seem to always see owls when I have leftover canes and I'm always creating new owl patterns and designs and it drives me crazy because I'm not really when it comes to my art like somebody who likes sort of cute sort of things but I can't seem to make stop making the owls because they're so cute <laughs> so it's sort of a love sort of thing. <laughs> I understand that completely I was talking to Christy Friesen and she has a passion for making little ghoulies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she well. was just like, she said, whenever I just feel like playing, I just make them. And I thought, wow, that's, it's nice to have something like that. Yeah. Yes. And it, it's the same sort of thing. And the so this, I love doing polymer clay faces. One of the first things that I taught myself, actually the very first thing, 
when I first learned about polymer clay, I saw a catalog and it had some watches that had little faces on the band. And I looked at them and I said, what everybody else does when they see polymer clay, how did they paint those tiny little faces? <laughs> and then I read that it was polymer clay and I'm like, oh, I got to try that. So the very first thing that I tried to make was a cane that had a face in it. And it was awful. It looks like something, but I got better. <laughs> That'd be very and, true. Um, <laughs> these were made as part of the project where I had leftovers to make that um, magic swirl cane. And it was with the idea of making a cane that was a face out of translucent clay so that you could see the background behind it. These were just these were just fun. I still have some of this cane and I keep thinking I'm gonna have to try something with it again. It's amazing how well it keeps though. I you noticed on back. your website you actually had um, canes for sale as well. Yeah, because I've been doing so many Zoom classes and I haven't been any doing live events and everything like that because of the pandemic. Most of the time, I didn't have a whole lot of canes to sell because when I would go and do workshops, the canes that I had available would sell the live event. Yep. But now with Zoom and teaching all these classes, I'm making all these canes and I can't use them all. I offer them for sale as well. And I, I know you would pack them very well so that they would not get deformed in canes by the time they arrive. It's a great idea. These are a couple of your classes that uh, you teach live or on Zoom. So I've just, I've just grabbed these from your website. What would you call that animal? It's a bear. That's why I didn't recognise it because we don't have a lot of bears here <laughs> in Australia. Oh, it's lovely. You can learn how to make that beautiful um, hollow sculpted bead as well. That would be great. I have a, a number of other classes that I teach as well. I have one to teach how to do that in-row that we were talking about that has the, the multiple layers. So I've been adding new ones. I have a Christmas ornament workshop and an Easter egg workshop and things like that. So Very lots and lots of different Yes. The Inro one really appeals to me, so you might find me signed up for that one day. And that's one of my favourites. And these tutorials that you have, and I know you have a couple of free ones, which is what I downloaded and had a look at and to make the simple leaf cane. And then if you want to get more complex and do the feathers, you need to pay for that one. But I think it would definitely be worthwhile. And the quality of your instructions was very good. Really very clear instructions, great photos, good commentary. So well done on that. I'm going to be transitioning things over here, hopefully in the next couple of months, to have it all on the one website because my website just added that functionality. So those will still be there, but I'm planning on adding more. And you'll be able to, like, pick different canes at that point. So if you want to learn how to do individual canes, you'll be able to pick the individual canes or you could pick the project and then just pick out the canes that you want to take so you don't have to take like the leaf cane over and over again. You have a very active Flickr page as well with lots of inspiration I've seen. I, I use Flickr as like my online portfolio Folio, so that when I put new, when I get new stuff finished, I put it up on Flickr so that if people want to go take a look at my work, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Pinterest, I'm you know, kind of all over. <laughs> Where would we be without social media these days? That was fascinating. I love your work. I love your your color combinations and things, and the um, Southwest themes are just beautiful. There are a lot of turquoise, which is one of my favourite colours. So lovely yeah. to see. So you've got a Facebook group, I believe, and you do a lot of Facebook Live things on that? Yeah, I have. It's called Clay Up, Clay and then with the arrow. So it's fairly easy to find. And I've been going through different tutorials that I sell on my website and then just doing free demo tutorials and offering discounts for people. I definitely have to um, check that one out as well. And so if people are interested in um, doing a class with you, they just need to write to you. Your uh, email is down below and they can check you out on the website. And you've got a newsletter. 
So there are lots of ways to, to contact you. And I'm sure people have really enjoyed seeing your work. So I'd like to thank you so oh. much for your time today. And I hope that uh, people will consider subscribing to this channel and giving it a thumbs up because that means that uh, YouTube puts it higher up on the list and so you find out much quicker when, when you're a subscriber. <laughs> so thanks so much, Deb. Thank you. Thank you for having me and, you know, I've enjoyed it. Thanks, everybody, for watching and bye for now. Bye. <laughs>